You've heard all the excuses Republicans deploy after a mass shooting to avoid tackling gun violence uh, with, you know, responsible gun laws. But when push comes to shove, conservatives seem to fall back on one basic talking point. This was evil, and you can't stop evil from happening. To begin with, let me point out the obvious. Evil swept across Uvalde yesterday. What his motives were, but whatever they were, they were evil. And in the face of such unthinkable evil, it was an act of pure evil. Evil is sadly always present. This act of evil. Evil is evil is evil. And we'll use the weaponry that is available. So they're not alone. Uh, this time around, along with their thoughts and prayers, multiple Republican senators, the Texas Republican Party and the National Rifle Association, they all offered Americans uh, statements that blamed the shooting on evil. Republican State Representative Matt Schaefer of Texas spelled out the Republican argument to reporters on Wednesday, saying in part, quote, law-abiding citizens worry about obeying the law. Criminals don't. He said evil people are responsible for evil acts. Now, of course, for Schaefer, this was a remix of what he tweeted in 2019 after a different fatal mass shooting in Texas. Quote, I'm not going to use the evil acts of a handful of people to diminish the God-given rights of my fellow Texans, period. None of these so-called gun control solutions will work to stop a person with evil intent. Now, a few people are going to disagree that causing mass death uh, with guns in schools, supermarkets, or houses of worship are acts of evil. I'm certainly not. But while that's the beginning of the conversation for most people, for Republicans, though, it's a conversation ender. And one journalist says that we need to pay more attention to that. That's Patrick Blanchfield, who has researched American gun violence for more than a decade. In fact, in an essay written after the mass shooting on the Las Vegas Strip back in 2017, he argued that as long as we let the conservative case for evil go unanswered, we are accepting that mass shootings are just a normal part of American life. Quote, against evil, in its purity, what can mere humans simply accomplish? Politicians plead weakness and join the feeble citizenry in the only thing we humans can do. Pray. Now, to pretend we could do anything more becomes a kind of hubris, an insult to the dead. The moment of reckoning we know is ever deferred. The bullets come Regardless, and here we are five years later, still being horrified by mass gun violence, still hearing that evil cannot be stopped, still being told that doing anything except praying is just politicizing this evil. Is this really all Americans can expect from their elected officials? And if all these politicians say you can't stop evil from happening, why did they run for political office in the first place? Joining me now is Patrick Blanchfield, associate faculty member at the Brooklyn Institute for Social Research and author of the upcoming book, Gun Power, The Structure of American Violence. Uh, Patrick, it's great to have you with us. Thank you for making time for us. I, I don't think anybody's going to argue that mass murder with an assault weapon is not an evil act by any definition. What's different, though, about the way conservatives use that language to stifle debate about what can be done? Thanks so much for having me. And I, I really appreciate the way that you frame what I think is the key issue, namely that it's a conversation ender rather than a conversation starter. And I, I think if you, for those of us who can extend our memory back beyond like the traumatic timeline of the most recent mass shooting, we may recall many of those same Republicans and lots of other American politicians invoking evil as a reason to invade other countries, to pass right. legislation or roll back legislation, right? There's a total so social mobilization around evil that for some reason, is not even thinkable here. Rather, evil ends the conversation as opposed to, you know, leading us to drop bombs somewhere. Yeah, and I was going to say to your point, I'm old enough to remember after 9-11, uh, President Bush's speech, The Axis of Evil, where he singled out Iran, Iraq, North Korea, and basically used that cause of evil as a reason to invade Iraq and, and launch that war in the wake of 9-11. Uh, of and, and you also hear not just conservatives, but a lot of Data-focused researchers out there say that mass shootings are statistically rare, uh, that the vast majority of shooting deaths in the U.S. in the U.S. excuse me are suicides or related to other crimes, and therefore the media is sensationalizing and blowing these mass murders out of proportion. What do you say to that? Because these mass shootings, I think for me, they shock our conscious in ways that day-to-day -day violence does not, and that's why we should pay attention to it. And again, to draw on the terrorism analogy. 
we've experienced acts of terror over the last 20 years that statistically are far and few, but they shock our system and they make our government completely upend our way of life to protect us from these rare occurrences. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right to point to. And I think there is this way in which thinking about evil as denoting something exceptional, something wicked, like the, the, the denouement of a horror movie, right? It's the demon inside somebody. It's, it's something beyond the human, particularly when it comes to mass shootings. Like, yeah, these events are manifestly horrifying. They uh, corrode our ability to function in the public square. They diminish our faith in one another and the other institutions. They can be used to like have people lose faith in schools and other institutions like that. Uh, but also, as and I think that we do need to mobilize socially about this, but also like there's this weird kind of like half truth in invoking these exceptional kinds of me evil as being the real problem or the only problem, while also either selectively ignoring other types of gun violence or like statistical, like, yes, there's a point in the statistics here insofar as that most mass shootings or at least most high body count episodes involving a gun happen inside America's homes. They're done by American men killing their current or former partners and their children and themselves. But we don't have that described as evil on the national stage, right? And so like on some level, I think if we do want to talk about evil, we should both talk about these exceptional kinds of evil and use this moment to do that. But also we need to think about like structural evil, about what makes like, what's the evil that doesn't even get called evil? What's the violence that doesn't even get really flag ping flag flag like a flag or like ping the radar as a nationally exceptional thing yeah no that's a really good point as well and, and this week um you know a spokesman for daniel defense the gun maker that produced the ar-15 rifle that the shooter used in uvalde told nbc news that they're pulling out of the nra's annual meeting in houston this weekend due to the tragedy uh, but the company has actually long been known for its provocative advertising and you know just days before the shooting in fact on the day the shooter bought his gun uh, they put up this ad, Daniel Defense put up this ad, this photo of an elementary age child holding a heavily modified AR-15 with a caption from the Bible, uh, from Proverbs, that says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Uh, you studied gun culture. Help us get into the head of someone who thinks that tweet is a good advertisement, because, again, you know, we don't allow young children to be exploited in advertisements for alcohol and tobacco. Maybe at one point we did, but certainly not anymore. And yet this ad did not even get noticed until the shooter walked into a school and shot up 19 children. Yeah, I mean, if we put a cigarette in that ad instead of an AR-15 and his dad being like, I taught my child how to light up, here we go. Like, you know, you've come a long way, a literal baby. That would be unacceptable. But like, I think it's it's worth saying that this this appeal to like guns as uh, this kind of masculine heritage, this lineage of things that are handed down from father to son, like it's it's baldly stated here. It's in that tweet and in you know Daniel Defense's product placements and video games and TV shows and such. But, like that has a long history in this country uh, in terms of like the past century and a half. Whether you go back to like Winchester in the late uh, like the late 1800s or just after World War One, launching what they called the Boy Plan to sell like guns to young men. Like there is this way in which a lot of people in this country understand you know, guns and also the Bible as sort of centering the development of virile, vigorous masculinity. And like, look, that's part of the problem in terms of that other category of mass shooting we were just talking about, namely lots of femicide and children being shot, as well as this more exceptional kind of violence. So like, it's normalized on that level.